Hello friends, this video on electromagnetic induction part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 8 before going ahead with part 9. Now let us look at the first problem. It says that a small piece of metal wire is dragged across the gap between the pole pieces of a magnet in 0 0.5 seconds. That means you have let us suppose these are the pole pieces of a magnet. You have a small piece of metal wire which is dragged across the gap. So across this gap you drag a small metal wire from here till here. In 0 0.5 seconds the magnetic flux between the pole pieces is known to be 8 into 10 to the power minus 4 Weber. That means the flux between these two pieces is this much. So when it moves from this point to this point the, diff the change in flux would be this much, right? So that means the change in flux is given as 8 into 10 to the power minus 4 Weber. And how much time does it take to cover this much change in flux? That is given as 0 0.5 seconds. So what would be the EMF induced? From Faraday Lenz law, we know that EMF induced is equal to minus d phi by dt. Now what is this minus sign? It, it, it just indicates that the induced EMF always oppose the change of flux which produced it. Right? So this minus sign is only about the polarity of EMF. So this becomes 8 into 10 to the power minus 4 divided by 0 0.5. So this comes out to be 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 3 volts. So this is the EMF that is induced in the wire. So this example, if you think of this example, it is similar to the one which I discussed there, right? Where the rod was moving, a rod is moving inside the magnetic field. So as the rod is moving inside the magnetic field, there is an EMF which gets induced in the rod because the positive, because it is just a piece of metal wire. It is not a loop. It is not a closed loop. So in a metal wire, the positive and negative charges will experience force and they will get accumulated at the two ends. Now you might ask that even circular loops are also, circular. any closed loop is also now, they also consist of charges. So, why does not an, a potential develops across them? That's because it is closed. So, the positive and negative charges are not able to get collected at two different ends because it is a closed loop. So, where will they get collected? Right? So, but in this case of a straight rod, at one end the positive charges accumulate, at the other end the negative charges accumulate. As a result, an electrostatic potential is developed. So this is that scenario. So because of that an EMF gets induced in this rod when it moves through a magnetic field. Let us look at the next problem. It says that a 1 meter long metallic rod is rotated. A 1 meter long metallic rod is rotated with an angular frequency of 400 radians per second. Okay, about an axis normal to the rod passing through its one end. Let us suppose this is my rod of length 1 meter. Let me call it as L. On one end of the rod is the axis about which it is rotated. Let us suppose, let us imagine that the red point which you see here is the axis. It represents the axis. So the axis goes somewhat like this perpendicular to this axis. It is getting so it is rotated about this axis. The other end of the rod is in contact with a circular metallic ring. So this is the other end which is in contact with this circular metallic ring. A constant and uniform magnetic field of 0 0.5 tesla parallel to the axis exists everywhere. So this is the uh, magnetic field which exists everywhere. Calculate the EMF developed between the center and the ring. So between this and any point on the ring, what would be the EMF that will be developed? So now what are the values that are given in this problems? The magnetic field is given as 0 0.5 tesla. Length of the rod is 1 meter. Angular frequency that is omega is equal to 400 radians per second. Right? Now in this case, first of all, for solving any problem, first you try to think it in your mind that whether an EMF will get induced or not. So how much EMF will be developed, we will think later. First you think if EMF will be developed or not. If yes, 
why EMF will be developed. Now in this case, if you look at it, your magnetic field is not changing. So magnet, there is no change in magnetic field. There is no change in relative orientation between magnetic field and area, right? So the only thing that is changing is the area. That's because let us suppose I take any point on the rod. This green point represents any point on the rod. So I have to calculate the EMF that is the potential, uh, the induced EMF between these two points. Now, if you consider this rod, the rod is moving like this throughout the entire circle. So when the rod is on this line, then what is the area covered? Area covered by, by this circuit is zero. Now, after some time, the rod moves here, right? So what is the area covered? That is this much, this area. After some time, the rod moves here. So this is the area covered. Then again, the rod moves here. So this is the area covered. That means the area which is covered inside the magnetic field by this movable rod, it is similar to the movable piston scenario. You remember the entire rectangular loop was there inside the magnetic field. But as you keep moving the piston, the area keeps changing and therefore the magnetic field, the magnetic flux changes. Similarly here, the entire circular loop is inside the magnetic field. But as this rod keeps moving that is this kind of the radius vector keeps moving the area keeps increasing and again after some time the area will keep decreasing right so that means your area is actually changing because of the motion of this rod right so here change in area results in change in flux and this change in flux results in induced EMF, right? So now you know that yes, EMF will be induced and EMF will be induced due to change in area. So now let us calculate the change in area, right? So how do you be calculate the change in area? Let us consider that, let us consider a small area to calculate the change in area. Let us assume that for a small angle, say d theta, so, when we consider the entire, entire area of this loop, the, what is the angle corresponding to the entire area? 2 pi. So, 2 pi corresponds to the entire area of the circle that is pi r square. So, how much will d theta correspond to? d theta will correspond to pi r square divided by 2 pi into d theta. So, that means any small angle d theta will correspond to this much change in area. So, this becomes equal to r square d theta by 2 pi. So, this is the value of dA. That means the change in area is given by r square d theta divided by 2 pi. Right? This is how it is moving. So I hope you understood, right, that how the area is changing. Because whenever we talk about EMF between two points, we need to consider a circuit. So the circuit will be completed only when the, we consider this rod. For example, if the rod is here, your circuit is like this, this, this and this. Again, when the rod comes here, your circuit will be like this. Similarly, when the rod comes here, your circuit will be like this. Because whenever we talk about the fact that a current is flowing through a loop, that means there has to be a loop in reality, right? So, as your length keeps moving, your area keeps changing. So, this is the change in area. Now, let me calculate the change in flux. Because thereafter only, we can calculate the EMF induced. So, how do we define magnetic flux? Magnetic flux is nothing but magnetic field into area. So area here is change in area. So we can say d phi that is change in flux is equal to magnetic field into change in area. And what is induced EMF? It is nothing but d phi by dt. I have not put the negative sign because negative sign doesn't have any other significance except the direction. It just says that the induced EMF opposes the change of flux which produced it, right? So this becomes d into dA by dt, right? 
So this becomes B into what is dA by dt? dA by dt is equal to R square d theta by 2 pi. What is R square? R is the radius of this circle. Now radius is L here. So we can write it as L square d theta by 2 pi. So this we can write it as L square d theta by 2 pi. This divided by dt. Now what is d theta by dt? d theta by dt is nothing but angular velocity. Right? So we can write it as b l square omega divided by 2 pi. Right? So this we can, I am sorry, I just didn't, didn't remove this pi. This pi had got cancelled with this pi. Right? So this pi is no more here. Okay. So this is b l square omega by 2. Now what is the value of b, l and omega? All of them are given here. So you can just put the value b into l square that is 1 into 1 into omega that is 400 divided by 2. So this comes out to be 100 volts. So this is the induced EMF on this between the center and the ring. So I hope you understood. See if you look at your textbooks I have I have seen that in many of the textbooks, the approach which they have followed is not quite correct. So when you, you are talking about electromagnetic induction, you talk only about change in flux. So you always look at this aspect that where is the change in flux taking from? I mean, what is causing the change in flux? So in this case, the change in area is causing the change in flux. So we have calculated the change in area in terms of d theta. d theta is the angular displacement of this rod because here the rod is moving in a circular motion. So using that we were able to calculate the EMF which is developed between the center and the ring. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.